Hey everybody and welcome to the Paranormal Portal. It's Wednesday. And as it's Wednesday, of course that means you get not only me, but my good friend and co-host, the Big Toe himself, is here tonight. That is Mr. Longbeard. How you doing, buddy? Hey. 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 I actually have the, uh, I have the, uh, the old microphone working tonight. Woohoo! Woo. Yeah, I remembered how to do this tang. You knew, you knew it's it's still working. Yeah, it's still working. It yep. is. It, it's been a while, but uh, yeah, it's everything's been still working. Been a week. I know, but it feels like a little much longer. Does, yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It always feels like a long time, ladies and gentlemen, when we're away. But we are back again, and of course, uh, we are have a two-hour run tonight. Mm-hmm commercial free unless uh some biologicals start um, occurring <laughs> so i have a question for you though what is a two-hour run this fat kid don't run for nothing but cake <laughs> <laughs> maybe there's cake done <laughs> maybe we'll stack some cake at the end of this to keep you moving but uh, uh i can only uh i can only guess but um we're gonna be doing two hours and we don't have to do commercials tonight because we're not on the network so this should be a, a smooth run all the way through, um, and thank you so much for spending it with us. Of course, before we go any further, I'd like to give a special thank you to Cryptid Coin, ladies and gentlemen. This is a new cryptocurrency that has its heart in the crypto cryptid research realm. And uh, what I mean by that is that uh, most cryptocurrencies are only unique in name. And basically they're all kind of the same thing. Um, but cryptid coin has uh, cryptid research at its core, meaning that uh, a per- good percentage of the coins are being held in trust and uh, the proceeds of which will be used to generate grants to qualifying teams uh, that register for the grant process and reward word them grants in order to uh, help with their research, push their research to the next level, give them access to tools and maybe equipment and, and areas that they may not otherwise be able to get to. So this is really an exciting development in cryptid research the world over. So if you want to invest in the cryptid community, by all means, head over to cryptidcoin.io and check it out and, and uh, get involved. But Ouch. if you are uh, a member of a team or know of a team that may want to see if they can get a grant to assist in their research, head them head over to cryptidcoin.io as well. And a special thank you to CryptidCoin for sponsoring the Paranormal Portal. So, uh, Don, how you been? Been good. Good. New names in here, Daniel. <clears throat> um, there was another one. Yes, Don doesn't run for Twinkies. Sorry. <laughs> Farmy C- Farm says cake is a two-hour run away. There you go. Run yep. away, run away. We got to we gotta keep it's it worthwhile. Killer. It's a killer. It's a killer, of course, but uh, nobody wants to die uh, young and pretty, right? Well, you know, there's, you know. <laughs> If you got if you gotta live and die, you might as well live and die, might as well live and die like Keith Richards. You know, <laughs> let me let me let me you know let me from Motorhead. You know that look, kind of thing. Look like shoe leather and yeah, stuff. Exactly, yeah, you know. ridden hard. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm I'm I think I'm I'm already on that path. So, um, but we uh, have a lot to get to tonight. Uh, first and foremost, of course, will be our news news but we are also going to get into a bunch of different cryptids and ufo uh, discussions tonight so that, that i mean just a heap of fun waiting for you all but before i go any further i guess i would be remiss if we didn't talk about this a little bit are you ready don yes let's talk about it oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the playground that's right, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We hit over 10,000 subs. Special thank you to all of you out there who made this happen. And uh, this is actually my own footage from last 4th of July. So I, I took that down at the park. Yeah. But I figured it's a celebration. We did it. We made it. And thank you to all of you who helped make this possible. Right, the kids screaming are a little loud, aren't They're they? They're a little loud. They're all excited, though, just like me. Yeah. Um, we actually rolled it sometime last last night or today. I don't know, sometime. And, it, and it's funny because it, it took, like, forever to go from 9,990 to, to 10,000. 
But after it rolled 10,000, all of a sudden we got 15 more. It's just like... <laughs> so I don't know what the hell's going on. But I just wanted to celebrate and thank all of you for helping us get there. And uh, we really appreciate it. You guys made it all happen. So Yay. thank you all very much. Yay. Hooray! We did it! And uh, we'll be doing a couple of giveaways tonight uh, just to commemorate the spirit of, of hitting that milestone. So uh, buckle up. It's going to get fun. But um, I don't know. Anything else on the front end done? Um, no. Let's make a run for the back end. All right. Here we go. Heading towards the back end, folks. <laughs> Boom, there it is, Don. There right. it is. All right, ladies Boop, and gentlemen. There it is. Without further ado, let's... And thank you, Daniel. I appreciate that. Daniel said, you're the best of the best, Paranormal Portal. Wow. Aw. There you go. That's so cool. And and uh, a special thanks to all of you who sent all those amazing messages upon the announcement on Facebook. That was really cool. And on, and on YouTube and everywhere else I could find a place to, <laughs> to, to let people know, hey, we did it. <laughs> so, all right, let's get to the news. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so welcome to the Paranormal Portal News Desk as we dive into tonight's news. And uh, by news, I mean kind of news. It's news to me, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> ah, oh see what my. I did there? <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is the, it's not going to get much more sophisticated than this yeah, folks. So much it. Yep. don't hold your breath. You're if you're done. waiting, for, if you're waiting for highbrow entertainment, done. you're in the wrong place. That's all I can tell you. But we got some news articles up on the roster tonight to talk about this first one. I thought, God, this is amazing. Um, I wouldn't think this would be possible, but apparently it is. That's crazy. And, uh, what I'm talking about, of course, is. From unexplained-mysteries.com, they say two children survived for a month alone in the Amazon rainforest. What? That's from March 30th, 2022, wow. so it's like today old. Those gi giant anacondas. I know. Piranhas. Children. And, yes. Yeah, there's there's like oh, so many goodness. things in there that want you dead. Yeah. And uh, so that's, that's an amazing thing. That's really amazing. It says, two young brothers recently went mit missing in the dense rainforest that were miraculously found alive 27 days later. Wow. According to reports, G Glauco... And Gleison Ferreira, uh, age six and eight, went into the rainforest near their family home in Brazil's Amazonas state on February 18th to catch birds, and they did not return. Mm. Their disappearance sparked a frantic and extensive search involving 260 volunteers, including experienced search and rescue workers who spent days attempting to locate them. With poor weather, hampering efforts, and the search was called off after a week. However, a significant number of people continued to go out into the rainforest anyway in, in hope of finding the boys. Incredibly, 27 days later, a man who had been cutting wood near Palmyra reported hearing a child crying in the forest nearby, uh, about 22 miles from where Glauco and Gleison had disappeared. When he went to investigate, he discovered the two boys were both very much alive. Although they were badly malnourished, dehydrated, and covered in bites and sores, they were in remarkably good health and made quite a speedy recovery after being taken to the hospital. They are undernourished and have some skin, ear, and back infections, but said pediatrician and Anigio, or, uh, Eugenio, Tavares, uh, breathing frequency is normal. They don't have coughs. Mm. It is believed that the two boys survived by drinking rain and river water and by eating wild fruit. Ugh. The fact that they lasted so long without outside help is nothing short of remarkable. That's true. Wow. So that's a good feel good story. That's yeah, very cool. Yeah. It's the power of magic. Oh boy. It might be. 
And my, there's rainforest magic, right, Don? Uh, yeah. Probably, maybe. Probably. <laughs> Remember the movie uh, Medicine Man with yeah. Sean Connery? That was a good movie. Yeah, Bromeliads. Ants and the Bromeliads. Yeah. 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 I remember that. Yeah, that was that movie pissed me off because it's like no, <laughs> that was, damn. I you know I never wanted to like <laughs> to uh, to uh, uh, I don't know kick kick trucks harder than that, that that movie. It was just like no, don't cut it, stop, stop. Right. Yeah. But um, oh it, Fern Gully, no. <laughs> oh jeez. Somebody said Fern Gully. Yes. Oh. You guess who? <clears throat> I don't know. Rachel. Oh. Yeah, no, it's kind of a different thread, but uh, you know what I find interesting is that, that that a lot of companies have looked to the rainforest and and are looking at these traditional cures from right. from population indigenous populations around the world right. to find the next pharmaceutical. <laughs> so it grows naturally, but uh, we got to make it better. We got to patent it. Yeah, yeah gotta, exactly. How can we make money off yeah. of dirt? So there you go. Um, but yeah, that's that's really a cool story. I, I like that a lot. You like hearing the good stories. There's enough sad stories and, and tragic stories in the world. Fair so enough. when you get a feel-good one like that, it just, doggone, it makes you feel warm inside. So let's get to the next one, and this is uh, unexplained-mysteries.com. How will we know for sure when we found alien life? Oh, boy. Don, you got any feelings on that? Yeah, I got a lot. Okay, what do you think? I think they're already here. Okay. So you're saying we don't need to find them. They've already found us. Yeah, they've already found us. They just, you know, they found us, well... I know you go into Walmart any night of the week. <laughs> um, no, I was thinking, you know, um, uh, 53 or 54, the Eisenhower Accords. Sure. You know, when sure. it's a, it's kind of the official Griotta Treaty, yep. which was a joke. But what can we do? And then you got Phil Schneider fell into the hole, got his right. hand shot off. Shot off and, yep. Yeah. He got, he so, barely lived through that yep, deal. That's yep. right. Well, very, and uh, and he didn't live because all of a sudden he had a weird, well, I don't know, he, he died really suspiciously too, didn't <laughs> you he? You think? Yeah. yeah. Sitting in his, sitting in his favorite chair with a medical grade uh, um, rubber hose wrapped around his neck. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm sure he did it himself, yeah. Self, he, yeah, self-inflicted. Yeah. Um, but so anyway. It's like, you know, anyhow, never mind. I can keep going on that. Yeah. I think they're already here. I think they too. They are too. I, I think that they've been around, and I think they've always been around. Right. Um, I don't think this is anything new. But let's see what this article says. If, as long as this article isn't like stupid long. Nope, oh, it's God, not. It's not even that long. Uh, detecting potential signs of alien life is one thing, but confirming it beyond any shadow of a doubt is quite another. The confirmed detection of extraterrestrial life, thus proving once and for all that life on Earth was not a fluke would be one of the most important discoveries in the history of human civilization. Given the significance of uh, such a find, however, it is important to know for sure that what we think we have found evidence of alien life, that we actually have done so, and that it cannot be explained in any other way. There have been several false alarms already, including the apparent detection of alien organisms in samples collected by the Viking lander on Mars, the alleged discovery of fossil organisms in a meteorite that... Right. Even in even the recent detection of phosph phosphine gas in the atmosphere of Venus, even to this day, there are some who maintain that at least one of these actually does constitute evidence of alien life. However, there has been no widespread acceptance of any of them. To convince everyone, therefore, we would need more than just a single piece of evidence, but instead multiple confirmed detections, for which there could be no other explanation. Short of intelligent uh, aliens landing at the White House lawn, the ah. detection of alien organisms on Mars, for instance, would require likely, uh, most likely gain the greatest amount of acceptance if it could be independently verified by multiple sources. If astronauts visited Mars and confirmed the evidence firsthand, for instance, it would be far more convincing than the data from a robotic rover could ever be on its own. With manned missions to the moon and then to Mars planned in the not-too-distant future, perhaps we won't have to the, have long to wait before such a discovery will be made. Hmm. Well, that was kind of a non-article, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what they're famous for. They're was, famous for non-information. Yeah, it's like, it's like, hey, we need to be sure. Okay, thanks for tuning in. 
<laughs> it's like wow, that was a whole uh, a couple paragraphs for nothing. Wait, can I can I sum- summarize that real quick? Sure. Yeah, that would do it. That's a great summary, Don. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I should have looked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gave himself a round of applause. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, I can see I got to move the buttons pretty quick, but. <laughs> All right, let's get to the next one here. And this is another one from unexplained-mysteries.com. Great site. Check it out. Support what they're doing. Um, And this is Greek Merchant Mariner had UFO encounter in the Bermuda Triangle. This is from the 29th of this month. So Mm. this is also very new. It says, a series of very strange events accompanied a UFO sighting in the notorious region back in 1978. There are few mysteries as enduring and as well known as the Bermuda Triangle, an expanse of ocean in the North Atlantic that spans the area between Florida, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Over the years, the region has become synonymous with the unexplained disappearances of ships and airplanes, often with no trace of them or their crews ever being found. In a recent article, the Greek reporter dug up an account by a merchant mariner by the name of Spetzos, who experienced something very strange while passing through the area. His vessel had been traveling to Algiers uh, from Porto Mantanzas, Cuba, when it became apparent (laughs) that the ship's speed was anomalously high, despite the instruments reporting no such issue. A short time later, members of the crew began to experience strange symptoms, including the captain who complained that his body felt heavy and then he was unable to lift his arms. The Vanna syndrome? <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, exactly. They were getting zapped. The electrician noted that the clocks were all, uh, all two hours out for no apparent reason, while the helmsman found himself unable to control the ship because the gyroscope was broken. But the strangest of all was something that happened a little after 5 p.m., Spetsos recalled. The cook and I were playing backgammon in the smoking room when suddenly we looked back and saw to the left of the ship, i.e. northwest side, just a few miles away, a large, white, unidentified flying object in the sky. Then there appeared two smaller flying objects to the west uh, of the large one, and indeed one of them was attached to it. One of them was attached to it. Experiments of Americans, I assumed. Uh, I was I was sure that something strange was happening with time and how we were affected by the acceleration of the movement of the UFOs. No explanation for either the sighting of the various anomalies experienced that day was ever found. Mm. Well, is it a space-time anomaly? I guess, you know, it could be. Well, you know, I mean, they there's everything goes wrong. There's magnetics, all your gyroscopes and all your... You know, any, any, you know, navigation equipment just goes on the fritz. Sure. You know, yep. um, you know, you got gravitational anomalies mm-hmm. because there have been reports of people and ships levitating and different things levitating out of the water and then come crashing down. Um, right. There's just all kinds of things that go wrong in that area. And so, you know, why, why not think that maybe, you know, while you're, all your magnetometers and things are out that all of a sudden, you know, you're going faster and you can't tell because your ship's not actually, you know, registering anything. Right. The, you know, the, and, the instruments are not yeah. recording it. And so, you know, I mean, why can't you think, you know, I mean, if you, if you're caught in a whirlpool, you know, you're going to start going faster and faster. <laughs> the closer you get to the center, you're going to go faster. You know, it's, like, it's just the idea. It's called gravity. It's like any episode of the Paranormal Portal when exactly. we're circling the drain. Yeah. As it gets worse, we keep going quicker, and, and the next thing we know, we can't even stop it. Yeah. It's already destroyed. So, well, there you have it, folks. There the Bermuda have, Triangle yeah. continues to mystify those who enter it. Why are we not hearing anything about the Bermuda Triangle lately? Am I just not catching anything? Or? No, you know what I think? I, I don't think it's like an all-the-time anomaly. All right. I just think it's something that fires up every once in a while. Like so it's like a shift into dimension. Right. There's yeah. just the, there's a biorhythm to it, I think. Okay. And and so I think a lot of things pass through there with no instance incidents whatsoever. What if it's an opening to inner Earth? Ooh, what if? Yeah. That's a, They're not lost. They're just now in inner Earth. 
Oh, you mean like they would? They're actually going into yeah. the inner earth. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I mean, come on, Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean. They turn their ship over <laughs> oh, and up yeah. was down. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I never now. thought about that. Maybe yeah. they could just. Well, maybe they probably... flipped their ships over and they didn't even know it. Yeah, they flipped their ships already. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. There's so much possibility there, Don. There's too much to consider. <laughs> it's yeah. it's above my pay grade, but yeah, I just think it's not it's not something that's weird all the time. I just think it's weird sometimes. Right. Oh, well, good point. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, I don't know, but we'll continue the journey here through the paranormal portal news, ladies and gentlemen, as we move to the next article. And this next article, of course, is um, from unexplained-mysteries.com. Total number of discovered exoplanets now exceeds 5,000. Woof, that's a lot of exoplanets, Don. It's a lot of exoplanets. I think one of them might be a a good Earth, too. Um, Have you ever seen that movie? No. Don't. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. Over the last 30 years, scientists have succeeded in identifying a staggering 5,000 planets in distant solar systems. It's difficult to believe that it's only in the last few decades that the detection of planets in orbit around distant stars has been possible, with the first confirmed detection occurring back in 1992. But since then, our ability to detect these distant worlds, and in particular the effectiveness of the techniques through which such discoveries are made, has been going from strength to strength. I don't understand that at all, do you? Has been going from strength to strength. All right, now thanks to the tireless efforts of astronomers around the world, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory has confirmed that the total number of known extrasolar planets has exceeded 5,000. It's not just a number, said NASA's Jesse Christensen. Each one of them is a new world, a brand new planet. I get excited about every one because we don't know anything about them. Yeah, we hardly know about our own. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should learn a little more about this one, too. Uh, to date, around 35% of the known exoplanets are similar to Neptune. 30% are gas giants like Jupiter, and 31% are giant uh, terrestrial wor- worlds known as super-Earths. Only a small number are thought to be, to be small terrestrial planets like our own. This doesn't mean that Earth-like worlds are not commonplace, however, only that it is much easier to detect larger planets than it is to detect smaller ones. No way. It is, apparently. Wow. <laughs> Once the James Webb Space Telescope begins operations in the summer, it will finally be possible to observe these distant worlds in more detail. Whether one of them will turn out to be another pale blue dot, however, remains to be seen. Right. Well, there you have it, folks. They're looking for other Earths because I guess they figure once they get done breaking this one, we better have another one to go to. (laughs) To go break? (laughs) Like like we did to Mars? Yeah, it's like like our our Lego kits. Exactly. (laughs) Well, we lost 15,000 of the 15,001 pieces, <laughs> so we might as well just take that one piece and jet. Let's go to the next Shiny. one. Shiny, let's go. It could be possible, folks, that uh, our, our ancestors will be traipsing around the stars looking for other homes and stuff, much like our popular science fiction now. Elaine, I need a new memory card, too. I just have nowhere to put it anymore. <laughs> is, this, is this a metaphor? I don't know. Oh, okay. For me, it was. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. No, I'm For you. out. Yeah. Upgraded no. my, my new computer to 32 gigs, and I'm done. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's it. I'm done. That's a, that's a fistful of gigs right there, though. All right. Here's the next one. Uh, unexplained-mysteries.com. Don, won't be long, and there will be Iron Mans everywhere. You know, I, yeah, I, I'm. Unexplained-mysteries.com. That's what she said. <laughs> Ooh, hey. Uh, jet suit paramedics are ready for takeoff in Lake District. And look at that picture. That's a, wow. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I think that stuff's pretty cool. What happens to his legs? I mean, if it gets, you know, caught behind whatever jet stream that is coming out of there, is it hot? <laughs> or is it just like like <coughs> blowing air? It's like a giant super air rocket. Boy, I don't know. I don't know anything about it yet, Blow but let's, let's see what the article says. Okay. Jet suits capable of speeds of up to 85 miles per hour could help paramedics reach accident victims in remote areas much faster. That would be cool. Yeah. Reaching injured hikers, the Peak District, and other remote areas of the British Isles uh, can prove challenging at the best of times, with ambulance crews often having to cover significant distances over challenging terrain to reach someone in need of immediate medical assistance. Well, now, thanks to inventor B- Richard Browning, however, paramedics are preparing to embark on the first time to- for the first time this summer using flying jet suits 
to cover large swaths of awkward terrain within minutes. The scheme kicked off a couple of years ago with members of the Great North Air Ambulance training uh, how to use the jet suit safely and effectively. And since then, one has completed one has completed their training and another two will be ready very soon. Ooh-hoo. As an example of their effectiveness in the in the case of one particular fell fell that would normally take 30 minutes to reach, the jet suits would make it possible to get there in a mere 90 seconds. Wow. That's phenomenal. Well, yeah. yeah. Such a speed could mean all the difference if someone was in a life or death scenario. We're still awestruck by it. Everyone looks at the wow factor and the fact that we are the world's first jet suit paramedics, but for us it's about delivering patient care said GNAA Operations Director Andy Mawson. When I first started as a paramedic, I never thought I'd be working uh, with a helicopter. Never mind this. Yeah, there you go. That's a way to roll. Yeah, I think I that's cool. But <laughs> you, know what it, you know what it makes me think about? What's that? If this is what the paramedics have. Oh. What, what, well, yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. What are the SEAL teams using, and, man? Andre Purity says Paranormal Portal Jetpacks. Next, they'll have an Iron Man suits for the military. Yeah, you, you know they it. will. Yeah. yeah, this is. I mean, this is what the, the civilians get. It's like, yeah. man, what what do they got under black curtains? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, well, here's there's... your graham crackers. We got the co- the chocolate covered ones. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Here's your moped while we yeah. get in the Ferrari. Yeah, exactly. You ever had a pedal? It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a pedal power moped. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's really exciting, though. I mean, yeah, it is. Thinking of that, and then it is that is a, a brilliant use oh, of oh, technology yeah. to help make life better. That is true, and it's not just being hoarded by you know these people. Why we can put it on special forces and take over you know storm compounds. You know, well, I'm sure you can, but you can also get the hikers that fell from a cliff and and you know maybe yeah. we'll get to go home now. Yeah. So that's really cool. That's a responsible use, I think. Um, since you know we can't fly ourselves, right? You know yet. Well, you know, <laughs> you know, there's a few things on this face of the earth that weren't meant to fly. My big butt was <laughs> the only reason I fly is because I fell off the roof again. Yeah. <sighs> well, you know, there's that, that, that there in gravity, right? Yeah. Stay off the motorcycles, Don. You'll dislocate your other shoulder. <laughs> All right. Let's get to the next article. <laughs> Please. Uh, I don't know. I'm just remembering do. wounds. There. I know you. I just feel like just we need. We reminiscing need to... on the wounds. <laughs> We might need to take a break and just talk. Remember that time when we were in fifth grade and we jumped off that twenty foot <laughs> cliff? Did yep. you do? It? Did you sure try do. to do? It? Did you try to do it with the with the the um like the beach towels? I tried to do it with beach towels. Oh no, I just I thought you could make a parachute out of them. Oh hell, and, no. and you can't, folks. I no, found out you God. can't. So, those uh, don't those do not work as parachutes. Good beach job, towels. Wiley Coyote. <laughs> good job. I was that kid. I was that kid. <laughs> I thought for sure that would work as a beach towel, and I le- leapt off of a porch on the second story. Holding the, holding the corners. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. even have time to open. <laughs> it's like, it's like it was just, I, I was like a party streamer heading towards the turf. And all you're doing is, all you're using that, all you're using that uh, towel for is just to wrap your wounds. I know. It's like, oh, I broke this one. Oh. I didn't break anything, thank God. <laughs> yeah, but, me too. Man, the ground came a lot harder than I was really ready I'd for. See, yeah. I tell you like what, I was I was kissing my 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 ankles yeah it's like, oh. you know, I like, didn't know I can compress like that but I found out I could yeah well yeah yeah just break your toe sometime I've done that oh, I've done God. that a few times actually oh, gosh. that that was the most horrible pain <laughs> <laughs> like right. jumping around. You're still scarred. I broke my damn toe. <laughs> Yelling it. It was like yeah. 11 o'clock midnight. I broke my damn toe. Yeah. Well. <laughs> All right. Here's, oh, here's the next article up to bat. <laughs> I and better this, hit that like button. This, Yeah, everybody <laughs> better hit that like button. Unexplained-mysteries.com reports. UK company develops working invisibility shield. Then I saw this demonstrated. Yes, yes, and, and I've it's, seen it. it's this weird, like textured plexiglass shield. It's like one of those. It's just linser lenses. Lin- it's almost like those those. Yeah, it's like slots. Yeah, they look like almost like little uh, pyramid shapes that are long and right. and go the length of the shield. And basically, they just refract the light around the person. Right. And and this this picture that you're looking at on your screen, this is a perfect example of. What it looks like, it's not a perfect, you know, well, I mean, yeah, you cold. can tell there's something wrong. But there. if you were in br- a brush or something, if you had brush in front of you, you, I mean, you could go full Sasquatch on this deal and, and just, 
be watching somebody if you had brush in front of you there's no way in hell they'd be able to see right. that you were there so it says move over harry potter one uk-based startup is about to give the iconic wizard's invisibility cloak a run for its money there have been quite a few attempts to build an effective invisibility cloak over the last few years with modern technology finally beginning to catch up with the science fiction staple of rendering an object invisible to the naked eye. I like naked eyes. <laughs> okay, Don. Ah, uh, the latest attempt, which comes courtesy of the Invisibility Shield Co., is undeniably impressive, offering a freestanding uh, shield that uses an array of precision lenses to deflect light from the person or object standing immediately behind it while filling the space with the background scenery. Unlike some invisibility cloak solutions, this one works without any power source whatsoever and is quite lightweight, enabling a, sing a single person to pick it up and move it around with ease. Uh, while it doesn't offer total invisibility, it's clear that the shield itself is there. The real potential comes from imagining how this could be used to camouflage tanks, planes, well, or other equipment on the battlefield, or to make it difficult for the enemy to spot soldiers hiding nearby. Also, unlike several other invisibility cloaks we've seen in recent years, this one is actually available to purchase through the company's Kickstarter page with prices starting at $64 for a 12 by 8 inch version. 12 by 8 inch? Eight? What's that going to... So what if, are you going to hide with that? Well, I can tell you. <laughs> My sub sandwich. <laughs> You can check out the cloak in action in the video below. And it really does work like that. That's 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 really what it looks like when it's used. But I don't know what 8 inches is going to give you. I tell you never man. mind, never mind. Don, Don, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I can't hear you. La, 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 la. All right. Anyway, that's, uh, I didn't want Don to run with that. That was way too dangerous. We just hit 10K subs. <laughs> I don't want to lose my channel yet. That's bigger than eight <laughs> inches. <laughs> Depends on how you measure it. Though. Well, you know. Oh my God. <laughs> All right. So that's, uh, that's that one. we got one more to go. And, uh, this is, uh, this one is the absurd. Uh, if the absurd had a, had an absurd kid and, uh, in a party of absurdities, this would be it. Um, I don't know how else to say it. It's just so damn dumb. I can't believe it. But somebody spent a lot of money for this, folks. Here is the newly rebuilt world's longest car is now even longer. It's obviously for Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking well, of length. I was say D's nuts. That's a ridiculously okay. long limo. Yeah. And that's what it says. This ridiculously long limo comes complete with a swimming pool, mini golf oh course, and even a helicopter pad. Are you serious? What in the hell? Are you going to land a drone on that? What do, you, what do you mean a helicopter pad? Known as the American Dream, the car is something of a lengthy history, having been originally built in Burbank, California, by a customer, Jay Ornberg, all the way back in 1986. Hold on. Car customizer. After achieving the record, however, it, it ended up falling into disrepair until relatively recently when it was purchased and restored back to its original splendor by Michael Deezer and Michael Manning. Can I take, can I take exception to the word splendor? I guess. <laughs> Not content with simply matching the previous record, the pair managed to extend it by a couple of inches, meaning that at 100 feet and 1.5 inches, 3.54 meters, it is now once again the world's longest ever car. The project took three years and a whopping $250,000 to accomplish. Talk about stupid money. I know, yeah. It's very hard to find an Oldsmobile Vista cruiser roof for sale, but I happened to find somebody that had a roof cut off and in storage for 30 years and was willing to part with us. <laughs> Taking the limo out onto the road is not recommended without prior planning. Yeah, what are you going to do? Run it on like a, an airport, uh, just an airport runway? How do you turn, how do you yeah. turn that thing into the drive through it? Uh, however, at its insane, it's, it, as its insane length means that finding a space large enough for it to turn around is a challenge in and of itself. There you go. There it is, folks. This is how, how this is... This is what what stupid looks like. <laughs> I mean, literally. What are you going to do with that? Why would you have it? Why would you throw that money at it? 
I mean, you could have fed hungry people or something, like giving a kid in some other country an education. You could drive them around and feed them in that yeah. car. <laughs> this would be like Meals on Wheels. It's like, I don't know. This is just such a tragic waste of money. Is it? It's so unimportant and it's unusable. Absurd. You're absolutely yeah. right. So, uh, but again, it's a world record. So whatever that's yeah. worth. I guess it means something to these guys, and God bless them for it. I don't know what the hell. It's their money; they can they can blow it any way they want. But I wonder what kind of gas that thing takes? <laughs> All of it. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that oil field in Kuwait? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it takes that. That. <laughs> that. Um, there you go. That's the news, folks. Let's uh, get back to the regularly scheduled program. <laughs> All I can tell you, folks, is I love my job. It's just, I love doing this show. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the news. Uh, it's just, I don't know, there's so much weirdness and absurdity. But I, I like talking about all this stuff. It's just fun. So I hope you enjoyed it as well. And I'm just looking at the chat. And remember, if you want to be a part of the discussion, by God, you can be a part of the discussion. How, you may ask? Well, there's a couple ways. If you're in the chat and you just want to, yell at us you can type in all capital letters or write at paranormal portal or at at aether archives and hopefully one of us will see it and can you know voice your question aloud otherwise if i actually connected the phone line yeah i was just gonna say it's not connected <laughs> if i connect the phone lines this next part is a lot easier <laughs> let's uh what is this oh i don't care if i don't need to make 911 calls thank you i, I guess you can now do 911 hello 911 <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, wrong number. <laughs> XI, XI, IXI, 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 I. Yeah, exactly. So now, uh, if you want to call in, you can do so. And the number is 720-923-0500. Again, 720-923-0500. R Ruger says, that's not a car. It's a housing complex in Toad Suck, <laughs> Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you know you could I, I mean literally that could be a whole a whole building i guess um, they should make it so you can just fold it up and stack it so okay. you got like different stories more child says paranormal portal hey guys been doing a spot of spotify marathon been missing the live shows oh well cool. spotify marathon that means you're catching the podcast so yep. you're still in there buddy cheers brother yep yeah thank you for doing that uh, and if and if any of you want to support us that way too, by all means, go check out the the actual um, podcast, and, and that can be found on Spotify, uh, Hearts, iTunes, Pandora, Stitcher, etc. There's just so many platforms we're on, so you can check out. I think we got 266 episodes of the of the um, podcast out there. So 266. Yeah, we have 154 first year alone. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, close to 300 because there was only 50, 52 or 54 last year. Yes. So that'd be again this year. Yeah. 267, something like that, yeah. Um, we have just we used to do, when we first started the podcast, we're on our third season. We just um, got stupid. Well, we were doing three episodes a week, so we hit it really hard. Really and, uh, hard. And, and it was, you know, it was a lot of work. We did 10 shows a week between the seven days a week on YouTube and the, and the three podcasts. Right. It was a, it was a hell of a run it for was, a while, yeah. but never planning to do that one again. No, not without a lot more money. There. So there, I just, uh, I just dropped the Spotify link link in yeah. the, uh, yeah, if you want to check out there the it is, 15 hearts, it's right there. Yep. It's right there in the Aether archives post in the chat. You can certainly check it all out. Uh, some great episodes there. And most of those are absolutely different. Like 90 some percentage right. of them are absolutely unique to the podcast. So they're not. Sometimes we take YouTube shows and create podcasts of right. them. But most of the time we don't. We create unique episodes for the podcast. So there's lots over there to hear and check out. Um, but anyway, we got a lot more of the paranormal to get to. But... What was I going to say? I heard that laughter. I, know, yeah, I got <laughs> It's like, wow, that was really perfect timing. Ah, uh, the minion was laughing, so I, I heard that. We got to get to some some of the goodness that is the paranormal. 
And first off, we're going to hit some of these Money Made uh, article that we've been hitting over several shows. And this is Mysterious Experiences. Uh, now, most of these are paranormal. Some of them are just really creepy and weird. But for the most part, these are paranormal experiences. So this is coming from moneymade.com. And it's uh, an article written by, uh, well, at least aggregated by Melissa Budish, B-U-D-I-S-H, as of June 30th, 2021. And she did a good job. She's done a good job. These are some pretty great um, experiences that people have collected. So the one we're on now is number 32, Thinking Outside the Box. It says... When I was about four or five years old, my brother and I were sitting on the floor with my grandma playing with my mom's old Barbie dolls. And at one point, my grandma got up to go make dinner, but she wanted to put the box of dolls away. And first, since they had all these tiny accessories and she didn't want my baby brother to choke on them. Well, I watched her put the box on the top shelf of the closet behind me before walking to the kitchen. Sorry, I had a sniffle. Uh, and I found something else to do, and I was playing quietly by myself. My back was turned to both my brother and the closet. When my grandma came in to check on us, a few minutes later, her face flashed with surprise. She asked me angrily why I had taken the box down after she put it away. I had no clue what she was talking about until I turned around and saw my brother playing with a Barbie, the box sitting neatly on the floor in front of him. Ooh, that's creepy. To this day, no one in my family has any idea how my brother got that box. My grandmother assumed that I was lying when I told her I didn't do it, but both brother and I were way too small to reach the top shelf of the closet. It's probably one of the clearest yet most frustrating memories I have from my childhood. Yeah, definitely. Broken in bones. Broken in bones. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really creepy, because what if that kid had caught something to choke on? Right. Yikes. But anyway, number 33, expert <laughs> testimony. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's an expert. Um, my, my friend got Shut this. Shut up, Don. <laughs> my friend got this stone carved uh, egg, this star, carved stone egg <laughs> from his dad that he picked up somewhere in Africa. Nice. It had a fish on one side and a rooster on the other and some art in between. And mm-hmm. one day, I, are, you, are you okay? <laughs> One day I was playing with it (laughs) randomly and discovered that it had the following properties. If you spun the egg counterclockwise, it would always stop with the fish side up. If you spun it clockwise, it always stopped with the rooster side up. And it would never stop with an art pattern facing up. Uh, And when I say always, I mean always. It was super weird. We were just yelling all day long all day in his room every time we did a test spin uh, when we first found out. Then we started gaming kids at school for cash. <laughs> oh boy! Kids would never pay attention to which way it was spun, and after a month of this, it was tough finding suckers. <laughs> but then one day this kid got mad that he lost, so he picked up the egg and threw it across the room, and it shattered into bits. And that was the end of that. I never did find out what sorcery was behind that darn thing. There's a magnet. You think so? Well, if you spin it one way with, you know, with it facing one way and it always ended up this, that way, then you took it and you flipped it over and did the same thing. You just flipped the magnet over. So if it was pointing to magnetic north, it would still point to magnetic north. It would just be opposite. Never mind. I don't know. I mean, maybe there's something to that. I'm I trying, don't know. I'm trying to track that logic. But. Yeah, but it, well, it works. Okay. Yeah. Just trust me. I believe you. I don't know. I don't pretend to know. I uh, I don't know. Um, number 34, brotherly love. My father got intoxicated once. Because and... we boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and I let it, and let it slip that he had a child from another woman. Ooh. He was married to my mom at the time, so the woman took their son and raised him in Germany, oh. her homeland. Well, I thought it was common knowledge on this side of the family, so I mentioned it once, oh. but... My casual announcement was greeted with shock and tears. Oh, no. No. Whoa. Don't bring up those kind of things at family gatherings. No. My dad was always a philandering liar, but apparently he kept that child a secret. And I can't even remember the kid's name now. I wrote it down in one of my many diaries. He'd be a middle-aged man now. My father has dementia, so I can't get the name from him. So as a result, I know I have a brother out there somewhere in Europe, but... I will probably never meet him and have no idea how to find out who he is. 
That was okay. love you guys, but yeah, that's the tough part, man. That's that's tough. I guess it sounds like this is an only child, right? Yeah, that's what it. Yeah, seems like. Yep. Goodness. So I guess it would be kind of nice, especially with the father sliding into dementia, to have some kind of family to I, you know. I wonder if I wonder if he spun that rock with the <laughs> fish on one side and the rooster on the other. Rooster. It's rooster. a rooster. Rooster. The male chicken. Uh, <laughs> Man, why do I always get the rooster? <laughs> Number 35, Secret <laughs> Santa. All right. My mom would always tell me the story of when she was growing up and how she really wanted this doll for Christmas. Mm. My grandpa had recently lost his job and money was very tight. The doll was pretty expensive. And she wrote a letter to Santa talking about her family, how good she had been that year, and about her dad losing his job. Well, one day before Christmas, the mailman comes to the door with a box and a letter from Santa. My grandparents had, had brought, bought my mother the, the doll, and it was sitting in the basement. So they were surprised to see another one delivered to the house. To this day, my grandparents and my mother have no idea who bought the doll for her. Mm. She said it was the greatest Christmas gift she had ever received, and it really shows the true meaning of Christmas. Um, yeah, I guess it does. It's, it's very bizarre. <laughs> that's a bad oh picture. It <laughs> looks like. <laughs> what the hell? It looks like <laughs> they're glow in the dark. Looks like Santa's got like glowing vibrators by his. his head. <laughs> Those are condoms. Who did this? <laughs> Open up, Santa. <laughs> I feel like you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's a terrible picture that's what a lens the... flare <laughs> it's a lens flare oh, look at santa looks all concerned too he's like what what <laughs> i'm sorry folks but come on that's just ter <laughs> terrible terrible uh terrible lighting there um number 36 home away from home one night i heard my boyfriend come home from work while i was sleeping and he came in and said hi and then went out to the living room well, I get up not long after to convince him to come to bed, only to make a chilling discovery. Uh -oh. He's not actually home at all. I called him, and he told me that he had stayed late at work. He also repeatedly insisted that he had not come home that night at all. Hmm. Well, I freaked out and made him come home right away, and the incident creeped me out for a while. Yeah, the old doppelgangers. Darn yeah. doppelgangers. You know, I wonder if they're really, like, doppelgangers, because most people say they kind of dis... The, like, you know... You're walking down the road and, you know, you know somebody somewhere and they walk past you, sure. you know, and they look around and they're not there anymore. So, you know, I wonder if it's just Demen like a tulpa that they're thinking about the person, they manifest it. Or a dimensional. Dimensional, yeah. 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 Dimensional anomaly, yeah, like true. where you're seeing a different reality. Yeah. Because this person was kind of, kind of sleeping yeah. and got woke up yeah. by this. I don't know. That's curious. Very strange but, uh, yeah, not the, that'd be a little creepy. Number 37, pen pals. During my senior year of high school, I always stayed in class to study rather than go to eat lunch because I had an early release and I ate soon afterward at home. Well, anyway, my pen rolled off my desk during the lunch period when only myself and the teacher were in the classroom. I never saw that pen again. I searched all over the room for it. It couldn't have been any further than six feet from my desk, but it was nowhere to be seen. Wow. It was in a deport. Yep. Yep, that was by Permalink, which means we don't know who wrote that. Number 38, watch and learn. Uh, <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> One day I woke up and my Rolex watch was gone from my bedside table. I was gutted, to say the least. It had a normal, enormous sentimental value. I searched the house high and low, but I found nothing. About 10 months later, I went to put some redundant boxes on a shelf. I guess that's where you put the redundant ones, Don. Uh, that required a ladder and a steady person to foot it. Bear in mind that this was an old Victorian house with high shelves that these shelves had never been used before, and they were not even easily reachable, nor could you see what was on them unless you were standing on something. When I went to put the boxes up there, lo and behold, my Rolex was there. And it was still running and on time. Huh. I have no explanation for how this happened, but it still freaks me out. Hmm. That's by Psycho, Psycho Whippet. Uh, yeah. 
Ah. I'm going to do all these whippets and pass out. <laughs> that's Go right. ahead and be on. Maybe that's how it got. Rolex got up there, huh? Psycho whip it. <laughs> so whipped it, passed out, put it up there, yeah, came no back kidding. down. What happened? Yeah, nice nitrous oxide rush. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it could be that, uh, that that place is haunted. Number 39 doesn't add up. My calculus teacher always kind of materializes out of nowhere. <laughs> what? I calculus guess, teacher? yeah, the calculus teacher just kind of materialized. Like <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know what direction he walks toward the classroom from, so I've stood out there and looked, but he doesn't come from anywhere. He just, he, he is just walking towards class all of a sudden with a cup of coffee. It's like he lives in his own pocket, <laughs> pocket dimension, dimension or something. <laughs> I, that's so cool. I wish I had my own pocket dimension. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. As long as that internet, you know. <laughs> like, Where'd that Brent get to again? Yeah, well, I'm a, he's in his pocket dimension, damn it. I'll be back in a, when I get back. Yeah, I'll be back when I choose. Uh, Dr. Doom 15 wrote that one. The Lost Week, number 40. One day when I was in eighth grade, I remember being woken up from my bathroom floor by my stepmom. Well... It was around 7 in the evening, and I had no recollection whatsoever of the day or the day before. And this was Wednesday, like today. And the last thing I could remember was going to sleep on Monday night in my room like I would on any other weeknight. Wow. I still wonder what happened during those two days that I don't recall and how I ended up passed out on the floor in the bathroom. Yikes, that was by Makushi. Yeah, I've, I've wondered how I, pat how I woke up. Strangely, in the bathroom a couple times too myself. <laughs> What's the punchline? <laughs> How about a bottle and a half of tequila? Yeah, that'll do it. That'll that'll <laughs> cause you losing all kinds of memories. The really weird thing was all the brown speckles on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh not if you're drinking that much tequila. No, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> well, when you eat, when when all, when all you have to eat all day is like these super chocolate chunky chocolate. Oh no, chocolate no, you chips. can stop anytime. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number forty one, the cards you're dealt. <laughs> yeah. Don dealt a whole that's bunch a, in the bathroom apparently. Oh damn. <laughs> <laughs> Don was doing blackjack in the bathroom there. <laughs> I got aces and eights. <laughs> <laughs> the dead man's hand. Yeah. About a year ago, I found I found a playing card in my wallet with a scantily clad woman on really? it. Really? Wow. No matter how much prodding I did, my husband and all of our friends swear they didn't do it. I still have it in my wallet and occasionally ask friends about it, but to this day, no one has fessed up to putting it in there. I wasn't in Vegas, and I wasn't drinking the night before. She wasn't in Vegas the night before? <laughs> what about the night before that? <laughs> she was not, uh, but maybe she talked to the person that was asleep on the floor. Yeah, and that's the story before. Maybe there's something going on here. That was by Becky Barbaric. Becky Barbaric. That's what I love these names. Conan's these... girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. Uh, number 42, follow the leader. A car followed me home from work late at night, and I didn't know where the nearest police station was, so I stopped on a dark road, and <laughs> that's not the good place to stop. <laughs> that's, that's wrong. And I don't know where the cops are, so I had to start can, stop in this dark alley uh, near my suburb to make sure he was actually following me, and sure enough, he stops behind me. I got out and grabbed the emergency axe out of the truck without even shutting off the car. He's got an emergency axe I guess in his so. truck. <laughs> Without I, shutting off the car. I started walking towards the guy with it, and the car sped off. I was tired and stupid for doing that, but I will never know why or who that was. Huh. That's my, written by the best baked potato. The best. <laughs> <laughs> I love these names. They're so awesome. Hey, man, you got a potato? <laughs> <laughs> Number 43, Star Power. My mother passed about a dozen years ago. At the funeral home, we received a lot of flowers, but one thing stood out. It was a lovely bouquet of flowers with a card from the, from, from the band, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, that said, We are saddened to hear of Renette's passing. We are, hum, uh, we are a humble family from southern Indiana. There is zero chance that she ever had contact with those boys. Is this something they just randomly do? That they, they would have loved her, though. She was an, the warmest person you could ever hope to know. That was by IU Alumni 12. Yeah. Well, apparently they knew her. I mean, they don't just randomly send out bouquets of flowers, Yeah, right? but anybody can send a, a card that says, love uh, the chilies. Well, love that's the peppers. true. That's true. That's right. That's a possibility. It's just a, a hoax. But. It was a joke. 
Well, maybe. Those are Let's... brothers. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe, but 44 Game in the System is next. When I was about seven years old, I was playing the on my Game Boy at my grandma's house. And I got annoyed that I kept losing in Mario Kart, so I took the game out and threw it at the wall. Yeah, that works. I saw the game hit the wall and fall behind the dresser. And after moving everything in the room and many years of searching, I still look for it and have no idea where it could have gone. I still wonder what happened to it occasionally. And that was by today, Junior. It's literally a bunch of T's. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's those D ports, damn it. We'll do just one more here. Ticket to ride. And you don't care. Uh, a few years ago, I got a traffic citation. It was oh. for 350 bucks. Wow. When I went to pay it off, the clerk told me that it was already paid for. Nice. Nice. That's great. I was completely shocked. Who would randomly go and pay for someone else's traffic ticket? I asked everyone I know about it, and no one claimed responsibility for it. I don't think I'll ever find out who that was. Why didn't you just ask? Or, you know, well, because they probably don't. Cash. Yeah. They probably no. wouldn't have any record of it. It's just paid in full. If we don't care. We got our money. That was by I'm the man 1388. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. They oh, just man. they just wanted the wanted the cash. Yep. Well, yep. well there you go. That's enough of those, I think. But those are pretty good. I like those stories. They're nice, concise, and to the point. Right, Don? Yes, sir. That's what I thought. I'm um, looking for an article that I had pulled up here. Um here's here's one that I thought was kind of cool. And this actually comes from CBS news. And I told you, we're going to talk about some UFO stuff. And this yeah. is something you and I have talked about a few times, Don, yeah. throughout the history of the show yep. as we're on our 10,000 plus subscriber, uh, just makes me go down memory lane. Yeah. Thinking about the things in the past. <sighs> Remember that time, Don, when we talked about UFOs, deactivating nuclear devices yeah we've talked about that well That's i found nice. an article about it too so well, there you go i thought we would get into that now with all of you after that drink all right let's get into it this is from cbs news ladies and gentlemen not usually the site that you'd find this kind of article not really it's from 2010 so it's quite an old article but it's from september 28th uh actually 10 33 a.m cbs Ooh. All right, so here we go. Let's get it up on screen so you can enjoy it with us. Again, CBS News reports ex-Air Force personnel, UFOs deactivated nukes. And we've heard these reports from time to time. Yeah. There's During the Cold War? During the Cold yeah. War, yeah. They've, uh, and Rendlesham, apparently yep. part of Rendlesham that's not as widely reported as that was actually uh, supposedly a nuclear site right. uh, that wasn't supposed to be there, but it was there. And uh, apparently the nukes that were stored there were deactivated by the the big craft going over the the storage facility. Right. So they they and the interesting thing about this folks is that these these old devices it's not like they're networked. They're not on a network and it's not like oh they just hacked the internet and you know disabled the codes. These things were on their own their own hard hardwired mechanical right. type of triggers. They these right. older older uh, devices. I'm sure the newer ones are equally as safe, but in a different way. But the point being, it's not just somebody with a laptop and a lot of uh, attitude that's doing this. These things were on their own, uh, like hard mechanical uh, activation methods. So the fact that they were absolutely nullified and turned off and deactivated is nothing short of miraculous, really. So let's see what the article says. It says, whatever the mysterious lights in the sky were, they seem to have an interest in our nukes. One of the more out-of-the-ordinary press conferences held in Washington this week consisted of former Air Force personnel testifying to the existence of UFOs. These must have been the disclosure hearings from Stephen Greer of 2010, right? Mm. At the press club. And their ability to neutralize American and Russian nuclear missiles. UFO researcher Robert Hastings of Albuquerque, New Mexico, who organized the National Press Club briefing, said more than 120 former service members had told him they'd seen unidentified flying objects near nuclear weapon storage and testing grounds. Uh, Stars and Stripes quoted former Air Force Captain Robert Salas, who was at Malmstrom Air Force Base in Montana in 1967 when 10 ICMs, Intercontinental Missiles, 
uh, he was overseeing suddenly became an operative. At the same time, base security informed him of a mysterious red glowing object in the sky. Now, the interesting thing is, is allegedly that's the color of the one over Rendlesham, too, when they went deactivated. Right. Robert Jameson, a retired US, U.S. Air Force nuclear missile targeting officer, told, several, uh, told of several occasions having to go out and restart missiles that had been deactivated after UFOs were sighted nearby. Similar sightings at nuclear sites in the former Soviet Union and in Britain were related. Uh, CBS affiliate KSWT describes Britain's Roswell, a case of unidentified phenomena that uh, in December 1980 incident or, or near two Air Royal Air Force bases in Suffolk, England. Several U.S. Air Force personnel reported seeing a strange metallic object hunt, hovering in Rendlesham Forest near RAF Woodbridge and found three depressions in the ground. Speaking at Monday's press briefing, retired Colonel uh, Charles Halt said that in December 1980, when he was deputy base commander at RAF Bentwaters, strange lights in the forest were investigated by three patrolmen. Halt said they reported approaching a triangular craft, approximately three meters on a side, dark metallic in appearance, with strange markings, and they were observed... They were observing it for a period of time, and then it very quickly and silently vanished in high speed, at high speed. Two nights later, Halt investigated another sighting uh, near the base where he was told by the base commander, it's back. Halt found indentations in the ground, broken branches, and low-level background radiation. He and his team also witnessed various lights moving silently in the sky, of one, of one which was shedding something like molten metal. Another shined a beam of light down towards them. The incidents were never officially explained. Several of the ex-service members speaking on Monday said when they'd brought their concern of such appearances to superiors, they'd been told it was of top secret and that it didn't happen. Hastings suggested the presence of such phenomena meant that aliens were monitoring our weapons and perhaps warning us, assigned to Washington and Moscow, that we are playing with fire, as he was quoted in the Telegraph. Hastings predicted a paradigm shift in the mindset of humanity owing to the existence of alien life. Traditional institutions such as religion, governments, other social institutions may be threatened by what is coming. That is just the logical consequence of what is about to occur. The U.S. Air Force uh, ended its 22-year-long Project Blue Book investigation of UFO sightings after investigating 12,618 sightings. <laughs> All but 701 were explained, and the remainder ca categorized as unidentified right. due to sketchy reports, a Pentagon spokesman said in 1997. We cannot substantiate the existence of UFOs, and we are not harboring the remains of UFOs, said Pentagon spokes spokesperson Kenneth Bacon in 1997. Uh, I can't be more clear about it than that. Uh, sure. Yeah. Turns out uh, other information has come forward that would uh, greatly dispute your claim, sir. Um, but there you go, folks. They uh, apparently like to turn off nuclear devices. Well, you know what? I'm okay with that. For the most part, you know, I mean, you know. I mean, Me too. I think that's great. Yeah, I think, I don't mind. hell yeah, turn that crap off. It'd be better if they just zap them out into space and then blow them all up. Right. Yeah. Just just get rid of that 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 equation all altogether. Right. Yeah, just get rid of it. Pshoo, go yep. On. Android says, I, I think they still keep nukes connected to separate servers. So if one does get hacked, the hacker right. only has control of one. I don't think but they're connected to anything. Is, Android. Is, isn't one enough? Yeah, 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 exactly. I, I, you know, anything. Especially if it's like one in Montana, one in Iowa, one in right. <laughs> North Dakota. Yeah, yeah exactly. One I think, in Moscow, one in Leningrad. I think anything of that high, high caliber is not anywhere near the internet. Uh, meaning that if it is networked in any way, closed, it's, closed it's circuits, absolutely yeah. separate and right. physically and um, by protocols. So like they're not using like TCP IP or or right. DNS or anything on on a, on a you know a military grade installation. They're using a whole another protocol completely. So it's not like you could even plug your laptop in using your you know your your communication card and talk over this network. It right. would it's a whole different structure and backbone. But yeah, yeah, I'm sure. It's called DARPA. 
Well, DARPA net is what was the internet. So that was the that's pr- what yep. they say it was. But it was yeah, it was developed by DARPA. Yep, DARPA net. The yep, that was a military uh, method of communication. That soon became what we're using today to bring you the paranormal portal. That's right. <laughs> With all the computing power of a. <laughs> Sound like a flat tire. Ran out of memory. Yep. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, glitch. <clears throat> syntax error. <laughs> yeah. Syntax error. I haven't seen that since line 10. Go to line 20. <laughs> yeah, run. <laughs> yeah. Run. run line 20. Print. <laughs> Aren't you funny? Uh, Farm says, isn't it funny that most humans think, hell yeah, shut them all down on nukes. Yeah, I think it is. I, yeah. I think it should be. Uh, you know, it's it's... It's one of those things. It's, it's the great, the great level playing field, but it's not level, and uh, you know there's only a few countries that have a lot of them, and and so it's like this iron will that gets flexed everywhere. Right. And I'm not, I'm not saying you know that, I, I'm, I, I mean you gotta, you gotta understand. I'm not coming from a place of you know, America's the best or anybody's the best. I think all, all people and things, you know, all nations are great and wonderful. It's just that, you know, this whole rule through might right. thing, I think it's, it's day has maybe come, and, and I, I wish that we would kind of develop to a point of just getting along, because I don't think most people like conflict anyway. You know, there's some people that seem to invite plenty of conflict, but uh, for the most part, I think people just want to be happy. So um, I don't even know if that, any of that made sense. But anyway, I want to move to this other article, which is... reminds me of the Partridge family. The Partridge family? <laughs> Uh-huh. Let's all get happy. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I remember that Partridge family. Um, I want to get to this other article. It's another one. That, but this take me one. off the screen, would you? Oh, yeah. I should, Just, I should probably. Well, don't put take me off. But, yeah, there you go. There we go. Let's balance Let's it. Save it. There's yes. a little bit of me and a Let's little bit share. of you. Let's do a little Let's more. Let's share. <laughs> sounds, sounds like a song, too. It does sound like a song. It should be if it's not. We'll have to write that one down. No, it's a little bit of <clears throat> da, 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 da. Um, Let's get to this article okay. from House and Wise. <laughs> House and Wise uh, is the next one, and this is Eddie Page, Hybrid Alien, Pleiadian Star System. So this is kind of bizarre. I, You know, I these, these are tough because I don't want to say that this kind of thing is not possible because it probably is. There's probably, maybe we're all hybrids. You know, if you get back to the whole Anunnaki thing, maybe we're all <laughs> well, alien hybrids. they've made me smarter? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. I'm a low <clears throat> brother. Because <laughs> I guess, you know, if, if you get into the whole Anunnaki thing, we just had to be smart enough to dig up gold. Yeah, exactly. Wasn't that basically it? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. So, I, I mean, they didn't need to engineer much intelligence <laughs> into that. You pick up shovel, dig <laughs> <Yeah>. hole. <laughs> Keep digging, love gold, love gold. Um, go to 10. Yeah, exactly. Go to 10. (laughs) (laughs) But this is a man from Florida claimed he is a hybrid alien whose father was from the Pleiadian star system. Pleiadian. I don't know. It's an interesting claim. Let's see what it says. The story of Eddie Page brings the most bizarre claim in the world of UFOs and aliens. He claimed to be an extraterrestrial, a hybrid alien whose father was from the Pleiadian star system. Eddie Page was born as Tommy Coleman Jr. in Florida. He was adopted at a young age, and his life was full of various oddities. It all started with the numerous high-speed boomerang-shaped UFO sightings that he saw at the age of 11. But things got more interesting and complicated when he joined the U.S. Marine Corps in 1972 and was sent to Vietnam on a top-secret mission with an elite group of special secret service. Hmm. Okay. this, This must be him then, yeah? Okay. Um, says, according to Page, something went wrong and he was suddenly attacked from the bushes by the Vietnamese soldiers and passed out when he woke up. It seemed to him that only a few minutes had passed. He was lying in a green rice field in a special issue black non, non-infrared uniform but had no weapons or equipment. While he was trying to figure out what had happened, military helicopters flew close to him. The American soldiers jumped out of them, seized Page, and began to interrogate him. It turned out that the paddy field was more than 500 miles from his original drop-off point, and 11 days had passed since he had been attacked, that period of time he could not remember at all. 
After three months of interrogation, several doctors were sent to him from Germany and other parts of Europe. It turned out that Page had an unusual state of internal organs and an abnormal blood type. Page's military record stated not of human origin. Really? Thus, he was not completely human. Huh. Wow. That's interesting. Eventually, he got released and returned to his normal life. He's never been told why he ended up in that rice field and what happened during those 11 missing days. After a few years of his release, Eddie's first wife had a baby, but he was not allowed to see his child. Besides, both the baby and Paige's wife disappeared from the hospital, and he's never seen them. Wow. Years after being haunted by this past, Eddie decided to undergo a regressive hypnosis session to try to reconstruct what had happened during those 11 days. Eddie met a hypnotherapist and regression analyst, an analyst named Giles Hamilton. While in hypnosis, Eddie found out shocking details about the missing 11 days. He remembered that his mission failed and his entire unit was killed, but he was abducted by aliens from the Pleiades star system who came to save him from death because he was also shot. And he was taken into a spaceship surrounded by three or four small aliens in silver suits. And he recalled he was submerged inside some liquid, which healed, actually healed his wounds. Eddie heard a small being through telepathy saying, no son of mine will be killed. According to Eddie, he was originally part of their hybrid baby program, which was carried out with the cooperation of the U.S. government. Mm. There's your Griata Treaty. Griata Treaty, yep. Uh, he further discovered that he was one of 50, the 32 clones in the experiment, consisting of 21 women and 11 men, of whom only eight clones survived so far. Wow. Page added that since then he's been constantly pursued by secret agents and that he has medical records to support his claims. His documents describe that he has strange internal organs and anomalies in the composition of his blood. So it's really not very conclusive. There's uh, several videos embedded in this, and I'll put a link into the chat if any of you want to check this out further. And I'll actually put it into a Discord as well, or, or Don, if you want to. Oh, geez, Discord. I don't even know how to get there. Um, oh, okay. Well, on my phone I do, but on the computer it's okay. something different. I'll no have to figure it out. Well, Android, if you'd put that, could you put that into the Discord, into the aliens topic area that would be great or, or ex cool. ufos whatever cool. i would appreciate it where does everybody hang out in, in discord anyhow does it like um, in the general lounge or well i don't know they're just wherever they've got a topic that you know i mean i don't know that anybody's on there like all the time i know oh, I, I, android's uh on one of the mods over there yeah. squatch talks how you doing it's Thank Eric. you, Android. Had a plaz doing it. Yep. Good to see you, Squash Talks. Yep. He said. Uh, he said, "Congratulations on ten thousand. So oh, thanks, thank Eric. You. We appreciate that. Yeah, we do. Thank you very much. It's long time coming. Let me tell you, as, as I said to Don in a comment, it's it was definitely the watched pot that never boils. Yeah. <laughs> you get kind of obsessive about yeah, the we numbers. Were watching that pot. Yeah, sure. we were. We were like totally on that all the time, and it was frustrating as hell. And, and, you know, it took forever for the last couple ticks. Just literally took days. And it was like, are you serious? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, blah, we got, you know, we not only, we went all the way past 10K to 10,004. Right. And then it was 10,009, then 11, then 15. So it's it's been climbing again <laughs> since. I don't know. It's strange. Yeah. It's very strange. But whatever the case is. Well, and we're getting, actually, here's fun. Here's a fun piece of knowledge. Um, guess what happens in two days? Um, April, April, April 1st. Oh, that's an anniversary for it's us. It's an isn't anniversary, it? isn't it? Yeah. Mm. See, you've, you've been on since April, six, April of 2016. That's when you started. Oh yeah. My first show with you was April 1st, 2017, a year later. And then a year later after that, we started the, um, podcast. Wow. 2018. On April. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I guess that's right. Yeah, April's. Yeah, April's are all uh, the anniversaries for us. That is a, a special month for the portal, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Very cool. Ah, wow. You know what we should do? What? We should give away a T-shirt. We're gonna give us something. We gotta get stuff away. So what we're gonna do, um, as as we're taking a break from that article, uh, well, I mean that article is done. Before we dive into something else, and let me look at the time here. No, Android. Um, I my first show on was april 1st 
His first show, I believe, was, I think it was April 16th of 16. Yeah, well, After I mean, the, the portal has been a joke in some ways. I mean, but I, honestly, oh it's, it's, I love doing this show. I really do. And I really have been uh, amazingly blessed with all of you and with Don coming in and then Sheldon coming in too. It's just been, it's this ever growing thing that's like a canker <laughs> like a rash <laughs> it's spreading like a rash but uh I, we, it's just been really you fun know, if you just pee on that it'll go away <laughs> <laughs> thank you android i see your message you'll take care of it good um wearing pink i mean green oh okay i'm just trying to catch up no on pink and mint green they wouldn't look good on little grays <laughs> no. No. <laughs> unless they're going clubbing if they're going clubbing, what, that'd be Maggie? Great. You got a Nasdaq death whistle? No way! Ooh. You got to make a video of that and post that. Yeah, please. I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to hear I'd what that sounds like. Have one. I, love I think to have we've one heard one. that though, right? We yeah, did, we played. Yeah. A, we played a video yeah. with it. it was it's like, a creepy oh thing. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh my Ooh. gosh! I don't need a shirt. Um, Wait, Rube, yes, I do. it's it's <laughs> coming. I'm sorry. There's been so many delays and mix-ups. I actually have. Is his? Does he get the cup too, or just the? No, no, the cup. Oh, is, the cup is for someone else. Yep. Okay, I, I have the cup, yep. but they had to resend the uh, shirt back. So I, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah, it's my fault. I'm sorry. So Ruger, your shirt is already coming for since Christmas, right. but we'll get it to you. Eventually. Christmas. Wow. It was yeah, it was a long time Gosh. ago. Gosh. Yeah. Um, but let's 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 go with uh, with first caller. Whoever calls in first. You're going to get a portal shirt. Make sure it's, if you've already gotten one in some other giveaway, let somebody else win one. But yeah. Does anybody remember the phone number? I'm not even going to say it. Oh, well, okay. Let them I, uh, yep. That'll be part okay. of the challenge. There you go. If you remember the number to call in, you can be the first caller. The number for fun. Yeah, the number's for fun here on the Paranormal Portal. Something. What are they going to get if they call in? A t shirt. A t shirt. Yeah. A t shirt. If you want a t shirt, a free portal t shirt. Now's your chance. Be first caller. Be the first caller. You know what's <laughs> going to happen is nobody's going to call. Yeah. And then we're going to move on to something else, and then 10 people will call. I know. It depends. <laughs> I don't know how much lag there is here on the show. I know. Because like sometimes there's like a minute, and other right. times there's just a few seconds. So it's hard to say, but if you remember the number to call in, it's kind of like our first contest here on the portal. If you remember the number to call in, and you call it. If you want a free T-shirt, I actually don't see it. No, but I don't see I don't see it on the screen. Oh, wow! Oh, because I need I got scrolled up for some reason. Hey, <laughs> it's there. It's there. It's on All the right. screen. Oh, 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 there's a call. Oh. This is a call. Let's see who called in and, get, and who is winning the shirt. Oh. It's area code three six zero. How you doing? Hey, it's Elaine. I thought it was Elaine. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know that. Yeah, I knew that was part of. Awesome. Where you were, yeah. There awesome. you go. All right. So a t-shirt. Nice. Absolutely. And nice. we actually had a. The bone host says she needs the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, by God, I don't know if we have bone hoe size, but we got a lane size. Um, <laughs> if you would, please just email me at paranormalportalradio at gmail.com. And let us know what size. Let me let us know what size, and we'll get a shirt out to you. And, and of course, the mailing address. Yeah, I know, I know that. Yeah, I need that was part of Okie dokie, I'll do that. There. Yeah, with your, with your mailing address. I heard other voices there, so I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> oh, it's my other phone has you on there. Oh, oh. gotcha. You turn it down. No, it's fine. Perfectly fine. I use my old phone to listen to the podcast, and then oh. that way I can still receive calls. And there not you go. Oh, that's interrupt. good. Well, you, you, you and the Bone Ho have a great night, and thank you for calling in, and congratulations on winning a free shirt here on the portal. All right. Thanks. All right. See you, Lane. So one down there. One down there, All folks. Right. Well, there you go. See, it's just that easy. Yep. Because if we make it harder, we'll never get anywhere. <laughs> and be the 10th caller. Yeah, okay, no. we're on caller eight. I did I did eight. that with Sheldon when we eight. did a giveaway. They actually gave away that uh, Ruger won his shirt. Right. And I was like, I was like oh, yeah, the, the fifth caller. <laughs> and like 20 minutes later, Sheldon called in. He goes, I go, hey, you won the shirt. And Sheldon's like, I did? And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he called in because like, <laughs> he was trying. He said, no, I was just trying to move it along. But he ended up being the call. So it was the next call was Ruger. So Elaine, woohoo! <coughs> maybe me. we'll need to get something for Bone Ho too. So <coughs> maybe get her a, a beef bone or something. Oh, Send yeah. it in there. We'll have to engrave the portal on it. <laughs> engrave the portal on the Bono's beef bone. <laughs> All right.
I'm just taking notes there. There, there we go. you go. Lane t-shirt. Marked it down. Yay. All right. We'll give away another shirt uh, before the night's over. So don't give up yet if you tried doing it, doing it just now. Just try. And, and again, if you've already won a shirt. Scope it out. Figure out how to make it. Figure but, out how to get there. You know, oh, you know yeah. the way I like doing it? I like doing it with the, I, you know, we did the, the randoms. you know. Yeah, so, you know, you, uh, email me, text me, whatever. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, for a week, over the course of a week, uh, put all the names in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Random name generator. We'll do that another time, yeah, because yeah, that takes a little more planning. See, here's the thing. I, I really wanted the 10,000 uh, subscriber show to be a big thing, but... Then it just kind of it happened. It was like, oh God! So right, I, I, <laughs> it's like it's a harder thing to put together and to organize other schedules and stuff. I was trying to get a hold of people on a drop of a dime to be like, hey, do you want to be on Wednesday's show? But uh, no, unfortunately, I couldn't pull yeah. it all together. So Dove I apologize for that, but we'll keep it going. Dove I mean, right. we will we will definitely uh, continue here. But we got more of the strangeness to bring you. And right now we're going to go over to some um, creature reports. And this is uh, from phantomsandmonsters.com. This is Lon Strickler's site. And uh, special thanks to Lon for letting us use the site to discuss some of his articles over there, or lots of uh, claims that he has reported. Definitely head over to phantomsandmonsters.com, folks. Support what he's doing. He's got a great site over there. And, he, and uh, check out his podcast. And look at that. That's weird. It's in, it's in German. Why? Isn't that weird? Uh, yeah. Dawson's Eaton, Verbuten. I don't know. I don't speak German, but anyway. <laughs> wow. Um, but I just had a pop up on the top of it that had like German words. Do I want Resolve Studio Seventeen or just Resolve Seventeen? Um, I, 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 uh, Da Vinci Resolve. I don't know what the difference is. Whatever either. one's free. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'll look at what I got when we're done here. Um, look at what I got. But um, what the hell was I going to say? Oh, yeah, Phantoms and Monsters. Check out his podcast, which is called Phantoms and Monsters Radio. It's formerly Arcane Radio, right. but he's rebranded to Phantoms, Phantoms and Monsters Radio. So check it out. Uh, it's a great show as well. So let's get to this report from phantomsandmonsters.com. Blood-curdling scream alarms bow hunter in Jackson County, Michigan. And I got to tell you, of all the hunters... That seem to have the most, as far as close calls, with uh, cryptids. Bow hunters uh, seem to be much more, much more likely to bump into something cryptid-wise than anybody. And I don't know if it's because maybe the cryptids really understand what guns are, right. but maybe they're not quite as intimidated by bow and arrows. You know, like I think they still may know what bow and arrow is, but I think they definitely know what guns are. Right. And they know that guns are dangerous at a long range or a short range or whatever. Yeah, big so giant I boomsticks. Yeah, I think they really steer weir real clear uh, of people when they have guns, but I don't think they're quite as, as timid when it comes to bow and arrow. And possibly it's because bow hunters are, you know, bow hunters walk through the forest incredibly stealthy. Like they gotta, they have to like approach and stalk areas and so they're they're probably making a lot less noise, and uh, they're moving through the forest to get to the game, and so I think that can also put them in the in the vicinity of these creatures pretty pretty rapidly as well. So, um, but this is a blood curdling screen from Michigan. Let's see what it says. <clears throat> a Michigan man is bow hunting in Jackson County when he starts to become uneasy and nervous. He then hears an ominous blood curdling scream coming from the nearby woods says, years ago when I was younger, I was bow hunting a new area in my tree stand. It's not too, too secluded, but off the road a bit. The area was in farm, it was in farm count, country in Jackson County, Michigan. The stand was on the backside of a swamp, and I had to cross a stream and walk through some thick, tall grass to get back to it. My stand was on the edge of a small wooded lot with an old fence line about 20 yards in front of me. The deer would use it as a runway, and it had kind of a bottleneck area. Well, I got back there kind of late, and it was only in the stand for a few hours. At the end of the day's hunt, it suddenly got really quiet. Too quiet. It also seemed like it started to get darker than usual. But still decent hunting light, and there was a damp chill in the area. And I remember an eerie fog started to form around the swamp. As I, was, as I was getting damp and chilled, overall, it just didn't seem right. 
I had an uneasiness creep within me. Almost a gripping fear came over me. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, I hear a blood-curdling scream come from across the thick swamp growth in front of me. I'd never heard anything in the woods like this. I was gripped with fear and thought that it would be a long walk back to the car. So I'd better leave now after hearing that. I started to make my way, and I got about 20 feet from the stand. Again, I hear that terrible scream. I'm becoming frightened. I start to pick up the pace, and I'm now making all kinds of noise myself, tripping and stumbling through the thick swamp grass with my bow and gear. It was becoming dark, and the screams were now occurring about every five minutes. I believe that whatever it was, this thing was trying to get a fix of my position. It, I, it was downwind, and it seemed like it was trying to get ahead of me or trying to get between me and the car. The sound was a guttural, almost cougar-like scream, <laughs> but much more menacing. It was definitely not a cougar or a wolf. Well, I made it to the car and got out of there, and again, I never heard a scream like that in the woods, and I hope I never do again. Someone told me that cows make that noise giving birth to calves, but this noise was coming from the side, and, and it seemed like it was moving with me. It stayed just ahead of me and was getting closer. After 30 years of deer hunting, I've never heard anything like that in the woods. That has got to be a horrible feeling. Right? Oh, my God, because you're out there and, and you're by yourself. I mean, you've got what you've got, and that's, that's going to have to be all, you know, everything. What do you do? What do you do when you hear that sound? And, and you might be food. I mean, that's got to be going through your head, right? Right. Yeah, it's like, uh, <laughs> you know, nice and crunchy on the inside, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Soft and mushy on the outside. Yeah. Tacos. Tacos. It's like a taco night. There you go. Yeah, that's horrid. That's got to be horrid, man. I, I don't ever want to hear that. I mean, all I heard was a growl, but that was plenty good. That's good. I never want to hear that sound again. Yeah, no doubt. If a scream, I don't know. I've heard some of the recorded screams, and, and granted, most of them I think are BS, but still, you've got to imagine, if you were out there in the woods and it was getting dark and you heard even a, 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 a fake to scream would be terrifying, you know, but if it's the real thing, oh. Yep. All right, here's another one about a creepy entity manifests on remote lake in Newfoundland. This is coming out of Canada. 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 Let's see what's going on here. A Canadian man is visiting his parents in a remote area of Newfoundland. One night late at night, he takes a walk around the lake, and he encounters a, an unexplained anomaly, and then he makes a creepy discovery. As with many things that terrify us and cause us to question ourselves or the reality around us, I tend to keep this close to my chest quiet and buried where I put the things I hope to forget. Mm. A bit of background, I grew up in a larger city in eastern Canada. The whole of my life at that point had been spent around noise and light, traffic and tides of people, and it made the concept of quiet solitude very appealing, and I learned to seek these things out and appreciate them whenever I could. So when the opportunity arose to visit my parents' home, I took it. This is because they grew up in the far eastern part of Canada, in Newfoundland. Not even from the big city there, but from a small town. One of those towns you can see all of just by standing on the biggest street within it. A remote part of the remote island in a remote country seemed like gold to me, especially at that time in my life. I was in my early 20s and I took off straight out of college, aimed at a career intent on making my mark, but... The city I was in wasn't particularly accepting of my skills or the language I spoke, so finding work was difficult and depressing. I gamed a lot then, more than I should have, and I ate more, I drank more. Everyone thought it was a good idea for a change of pace, healthy even. Of the trip, I will only describe our descent, for it is the most opportune use of the word I will ever know. If you've never been in a small plane at night flying above a sea of clouds during a full moon, then you're missing one of the few plane-based pleasures available to people in an era of manned flight. It's magical. The sky looked like wet black tarmac in the headlights. So many stars, and there seemed to be more than the sky could hold. Hovering in the middle of them was a sort of a spotlight of a moon, almost too bright to look at. These things together lit the rolling clouds beneath the plane, and it looked like pillow stuffing spread out horizon to horizon, 
all cast in a silver-blue light. It felt like I could walk on it, like it was only a few feet below the fuselage, and it, it moved and breathed and changed as we flew over it. It really is a perfect memory. And then we dove down, through that perfection, into darkness. We arrived at a small airport outside of their hometown. We could have driven from St. John's, but elected not to. Overnight driving in Newfoundland is perilous for people not accustomed to small roads and wildlife that still remains mostly wild. If your car hits a moose at 60 kph, yeah. the moose won't be what gets scrapped off the road. Scraped. Scraped, yeah. We still have some driving to do, though. Their hometown is not where we would be staying, but at a, at a been-in-the-family-for-years cabin about 30 minutes away in the woods. My lifestyle back on the mainland, fueled by disappointments and depression, had given me two things I couldn't shake when I landed. A desire to be outside and a completely messed up internal clock. I was so used to playing Ultima online for, until 4 a.m. every night that 2 a.m. felt pretty early. So when my parents went to bed, I let them know I was going to go for a walk. They understood, and Newfoundland is not known for violent crimes in the woods, so there was no real concern. I took a flashlight, a walking stick, mostly to avoid turning an ankle and for swatting away any want, unwanted attention from local fauna. Not that a broomstick literally would do much against an aggressive animal, but if you've ever gone walking anywhere not fully tamed, it just feels good to have something solid in your hands. So off I went. Now, ever since our descent, I'd been concerned. This general sense of tension... I attributed to a new place, no real creature comforts except some, some books, and a lack of computer. Maybe it was just the absence of that amazing scene above the crowds, clouds, but whatever it was, that feeling ratcheted up several levels in just a few minutes from the house. Well, I shelved it. I figured I'd acclimate shortly, and this was a clearly defined walking path that I knew circled around the small lake next to the cabin and would bring me right back there in a couple of kilometers, probably a 45-minute walk if I kept a good pace, an hour if I was a bit more casual. The whole way around, I would be able to see the cabin so I wouldn't lose my orientation. All in all, I'm trying to say I had my bases covered. I even had light, as the moon I'd seen earlier was still overhead, poking out from the overcast sky regularly enough to see that the clouds were fast, as they can be so close to the sea. So I'm walking down the pit, the path, woods to my right, thick, impenetrable pine, and to my left, the small lake. It's like glossy black frosted glass. By the wind and the moon, solo walks are great for thinking, so I let my mind wander and the path was well kept, and the stick and flashlight utterly unnecessary. At some indeterminate point in the walk, I felt someone walk over my grave. Mm. You know those slow chills when you can feel the wave of goosebumps appear? Flowing up your back, neck, forearms, and everything goes tight. I realized that I was staring at the lake, at the white noise of the reflected light, and not paying any attention to the woods. I became irrationally certain that something terrible was in those woods. I flicked on the flashlight as I turned to look, and it was like sinking into a hot tub. The goosebumps vanished, and the woods seemed utterly unremarkable. Mollified, I continued walking. Then it happened again, the ex exact same feeling. Once again, I realized I was absentmindedly staring at the lake, wondering if my house was going to go to go IDOC and UO. I remember that specifically. I don't know what that means. Okay. Um, at this point, whoops, what the hell happened? At this point, I noticed the cabin almost directly across from me beyond the lake. I'm about as far as I'm going to get from the house during my walk, and all I want to do is be back there with one of my books. As this thought crosses my mind, I notice that a small part of the reflection on the lake is missing. It's just gone, like someone went over it with a Sharpie. So I look at that spot, and I focus on it. All of the bad decisions in my life, that's the one I would wish to take back the most. Even while my homo sapien brain is trying to assign some reason for this, absence of reflection, half-sunk boat, thicket of reeds, weird stone outcropping, my lizard brain is telling me to back off as fast as I can. The spot is getting bigger. It is something man-shaped, walking out of the water, towards me, very clearly walking. 
backlit by the moon. I'm frozen. I can't move. It's getting close to shore when I realize I still have my flashlight, one of the big ones people in cabins like to keep around. Well, I drop my stick, fumble with the flashlight, not breaking eye contact with this thing. I find the switch, which is right where it should be, under my thumb, but hey, panic, and shine it at this man's shape. Of course, there's nothing there. Of course. Just water and moonlight, reflections all the way back to the cabin. I swear I stood there for five minutes, motionless, except for my eyes, which were grid-searching the entire lake. Mm. Finally, I decide I'm imagining things, despite every inch of me, Still screaming to run, I decide I will head back the way I came at double speed. I flick the light switch off to get my night stick back, my, my night sight back. The the thing is exactly where it would have been if it hadn't if it hadn't stopped approaching, right where I had been pointing my light, close enough now to start obscuring part of my cabin, literal literally visible in the dark but not in the light. I froze for some amount of time, probably only a few seconds, but. Felt like a lot longer. It got closer. Lake water moves noisily, but regularly. You can watch reflection on it, and it's just noise. There are no regular waves or anything. It's just a constant shimmer. The edges of this thing were like that. It was hard to notice at first, just because the lake was behind my view of it, but as it eclipsed the cabin and and some of the ground, I very clearly saw its edges move just like the lake. Mm. Some people have said scribbles. Some have said static. Mm. I feel like these are synonymous descriptions of what I saw. Mm. At about 10 feet, I realized there wasn't going to be any kind of stopping. It wasn't going to stop and say something. I dropped the flashlight. I heard it break and sprinted back to the cabin. I fell once, skimming my shin pretty roughly, but made it back to the cabin in about 10 minutes. It wasn't in great shape. I get back to the house. My head is pounding, ears roaring. I'm nauseous. I stumble in, collapse on the downstairs bedroom, two-floor cabin, parents upstairs, and they are undisturbed by my noisiness, and I collapse into bed. Mm. Then I notice my one window is framing the lake like a painting. Everything just outside the window is pitch black, moon on the other side of the house. I decide I can't deal with that, so I, I go back out to the main room, close all the doors and windows I can see, and I sleep on the sofa. At some point, hours later, crashing from my adrenaline in the run, I fall asleep. Next morning, my parents wake up, wake me up coming downstairs, and they ask me why I'm sleeping on the couch fully clothed and why my jeans are ripped. I'm too self-conscious at this point to say anything close to the truth, so I just say I fell and lost the flashlight and had to come back and just fell asleep on the couch on accident. Well, they buy it. I didn't sleep well or much at all. So I decided to go to actual bed and get some actual sleep. I walk over, open the door to my room, and laying perfectly aligned on the bed is the broken flashlight covered in dirt and the broomstick side by side like matchsticks, window locked. Wow. Wow, Wow, that's crazy. How's that for cray cray? That's a creepy story. You know, and that's, you know, you see those, you know, see those like jump scare videos, you know. Yeah. You know, they're looking down the hallway and there's the doorway and the the wall in the back, you know, Mm -hmm. and you're looking down there and there's this crazy shape down there. And then you flip the lights on, it goes away. Right. And then you flip the lights back off and it's like, you know, five feet closer. Oh, no. That was horrible. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking of when I was saying that. It was like, I turn the light on. When I turn back off, he was even closer. I'm like, oh, crap. (laughs) That's not good. That is not good. Hey, we got a call. We got a call. This is uh, this is Portal Mom. Portal Mom, is that you? Oh, it is. Hi. Oh, hey, Mom. Hi. <laughs> hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Good. Just wanted to call and say congratulations on your ten thousand subscribers. Yeah, that's really an exciting night, huh? It is. It's great. Uh, I know it's so, it's taken a long time, but we got there. We finally made it. You yeah. did. It's a, yep, it's you a, did. It's a big milestone. The for show us. is. Yep, the show is great tonight. I'm enjoying the chat and. Oh, good. I love everybody, and mm-hmm. so. 
Well, we'll we, we miss you in the chat, too, so I hope you uh, get your name thing sorted out and come back. I, I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. I don't know how to do it. Okay. I've gone to Verizon. They don't know how to do it either, so well, I think I'm doomed. Well, maybe... Until uh, you come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always that, I guess, yeah. Actually, I I, yeah. I think I have an idea we can maybe maybe fix it tomorrow, uh, if I remember, or if I get a time to do okay. it. But yeah, we'll get that sorted out. But thanks for calling in, Mom. Love you. I love you, too. Okay. Take and, care, you, too. All, all right. right. Night, Mom. Good night. <laughs> Good night, Don. <laughs> Good night, friend. Go. All right. See ya. Well, there you go. Bye. It's Portal Mom, ladies and gentlemen. Words from Mom. That's nice to hear from Mom. It's always good to get get a, get a hello from Mom, especially on this momentous night. Yeah, in case you're just joining us, we, we cleared 10,000 subscribers finally on our YouTube channel, which is awesome. And I tell you, Vetnam took some time. It did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it sounds like a good point for another giveaway, right? Should we do another shirt, then? Sure, yeah, why not? All well, right. we got a couple minutes What off. do you think we should do now? Um, I don't know. Um, um, gosh, I don't know. You know, all these things go through my head. Like, you know, um, uh, tell us about your, cl your favorite classic piece. Favorite classic portal moment? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, if, if you have a favorite classic motor photo moment, we want to hear about it when you call in and, and claim your shirt. Uh, what do we do, caller one again? Yeah, might as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to know if we're ever going to get one or none or, or what, so we'll just go caller one again. Uh, let's hear, uh, when you call, you can win a, a, a brand new portal shirt. But uh, share with us your favorite portal memory or moment or what you love about the show. Yeah. Let's hear what you love about the show. Uh, Android says, I love your mom's accent. Sounds a bit Canadian. <laughs> Minnesotan. Minnesotan. Actually. So it's like Canadian light. Canadian light. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of like Canada light. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yep. Canada that's... light. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing we don't go is we don't say a boot. Uh, we uh, don't put A at the end of our sentences. <laughs> Know what I'm seeing, eh? Is that your associate in the ch wood chipper? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was Fargo. Sorry. That was Fargo. Well, that's, uh, don't you know, that's a whole nother slang. <laughs> that's kind of like a, a Norwegian uh, yeah. remnant yep. accent. And I've heard people there talk like that. They actually do. There are some people that talk like that. But right. it's more commonly like me and like mom. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty much the Minnesota accent. But there are some that, oh yeah, you know, you betcha. Yeah, sure. Yeah, betcha. sure. Come in for crying in the mud. Come on in. Why was you crying in the mud? <laughs> it's just an oh, old, you guys. an old, an old figure of speech. That's from yeah, actually, Louis Anderson was in Minnesota oh, as well. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, good point. Yeah. Yeah, Louis Anderson. He's from Minnesota. So we're waiting on a caller. Anybody want to call in? If you know how to call in. You should know by now See, if you've, yeah, been, around the, if you've been around the show. If you've been around. Give us a call. Caller one. Waiting to give away a shirt. I mean, geez, can't give this stuff, free yeah. stuff away. But again, I don't know what kind of lag we it got. It is so. not MC Hammer's birthday, is it really? <laughs> can't touch this. How many, how, how many episodes How many episodes you have in the podcast? We have close to 300. Yeah, like 268, I think, is what we're at. Yeah, that sounds about right. Let me look. I guess I can look. And just well, look. yeah, because they're all in. Well, I oh, don't no, know. This are they it. still individually numbered like that? Yeah, they are. Oh, they okay. are. Like, this is, the, this is the new platform, and what does it say? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hold on. It's loading. I got the new podcast app here. I'm just pulling it up. What does it say? Oh, come on, come on. How many? How many? Latest, oh, I, I did just see it earlier. It's like 266 or something like that. Something like that. Dashboard. Maybe. I don't know. There. This is a new one, so I'm not really good with it. It's a new new app. I guess I could look here and just go here and then go here. 266. 266? 266. Oh, okay. Back up one page, yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Right there. Oh, there you go. 266 episodes. There you go. That's a lot. So if you're just now joining us on that particular thing, you've got a lot of stuff to hurry up and figure out. Yeah, there's a lot of portals to listen to over there. I'm, ter I'm here to tell you. We would keep you company for an awful long time, but we're still waiting for caller. 
anybody that wants to win a paranormal portal shirt, by God, now's your chance to do it. Uh, just call in and uh, share with us your, your your what you love about the show. Android says no one can call. No one calls because no one thinks there will be the first caller. I <laughs> know, and then nobody calls. All right, Eric. Thanks for. <laughs> All right, Eric. Thanks for joining us, bud. Hey, um, good night, Eric. Yeah. Thanks for stopping in, brother. Absolutely. Be well, bud. So there you go. There we go. We're still waiting. Um, gosh, I was going to say something. Somebody. Just waiting on the call. Yeah, well, I was. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Now I forgot. Oh, sorry. The crickets killed That's it. Okay. Yeah. Crickets killed the mood. Yeah. Well, you know. Well, it happens. Oh, well. So I'll just keep that one to myself. I might have to keep a shirt myself. Yep, there this you go. keeps yeah, going exactly. on. Let's see who is here. Um, let's let's do shout outs. Oh, quick. shout outs. You know, I can do that. Yeah, go ahead. I can do that. If you want a shout out, you there got a chat. There is nobody talking. Yeah. There's oh. Andrew, Ellen, uh, Elaine, uh, <laughs> Ghost Magnet, Maggie, uh, Mangard, Nash. Nash Manogard. Is out there. Yep. Manogard, yeah. Um, Ruger, Squatch Talks, Eric. He just left pharmacy and nobody else is talking nobody else is talking no nope. oh oh goodness somebody just joined us hi jordan nice to see you jordan Cogger. ruger, Good ruger to see popped in back yeah. i should say R- Ruger's he was in. brb um <laughs> let's see nobody else oh somebody else who is that um oh paranormal portal hi how are you uh maggie okay elise golf yeah there you go now we're getting some people in there chatting you better say hi or i'm gonna <laughs> I'm just about done. come on somebody call in and talk about some scratchy love oh hey there's, there we go there's someone <laughs> this is actually i think this is ruger red harvest hi red harvest that's a new name is this you ruger Joe hello are you kidding me? Are you are you calling in again? <laughs> <laughs> you can't win another shirt, dude. <laughs> I like you. Wow. And besides, you're still be- no calls. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You're you're the only one so far. I'm telling you. Okay, uh, I got a story. Yeah. If somebody calls in, you can just cut me off. Okay, right. go ahead. All right. Let's well, we was talking about speaking German. Uh huh. I was stationed in the first infantry division back in 81 and they sent us overseas to do war games in Germany. Uh-huh. So we was over there for like, you know, a month. Mm-hmm. We all come into a little old town. We'd been eating sea rations out of can. We come in to this little old town and there was a meat market there. And all of them, all these GIs was going in this meat market and coming out with these nice sandwiches. Oh, nice. So I asked a buddy of mine who spoke German. I said, uh, how do I get one of them ham and cheese sandwiches on that big bun? And, so he rattled it off, and I practiced it a few times, and I said, is that it? And he said, yeah, that'll ought to get it. So so I go in to this meat market, and this this young girl, probably 15, 16, behind the counter, and I told her what I wanted, and her eyes got big, and she shook her head, and she said, no. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. And so I rattled it off again, you know, and she's giggling now, and I'm like, well, I know I'm saying this right. So finally, she goes back in the back and she gets what I assume to be her parents. Two older people come out, you know. And by now, she's beside herself, just laughing and crying. And the old man walks up to the counter and gives me a look like I have offended his daughter and asked me what I wanted. And I told him, and the whole bunch started laughing. I went in there to order. I went in there to order a ham and cheese on a broken. And I was ordering six live chickens and a biscuit. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Don't you know they thought these crazy American guys? <laughs> did you go out, I'll let you go, guys. Did, did you go? Out, did you go out and slap your buddy? <laughs> no, no, no. He finally came in. He said, "What's the problem?" I said, "You ordered me a sandwich." <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, brother. Thanks for the story. Congratulations, guys, on getting so many. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. I'll let you you go. All right, good later. See ya. (laughs) Six live chickens and a biscuit. What are you, the the colonel? Wow. (laughs) That's freaking hilarious. Wow. Oh, wow. So we are not going to be able to give away another shirt, apparently, folks. Yeah, I guess not, yeah. So you're you're lost by game. Um, we got eight minutes left L- of our show. Lucky says my neighbor's celebrating her 99th birthday. Ooh. She is partying. That just rocks. 
The old girl has spunk. <laughs> oh, 99. very cool. Wow. Way to rock. Yeah. That's the way to go. I think, you know, it's like when you get older, hell yeah, just go nuts. Yep. yep. You don't know how many you got left, so you might as well make yeah. them count. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you just got to really make them last. Here's a, finally a call. Here we go. A call? Looks like somebody wants a shirt. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> I'm still a little raspy from that cough. Jeez. You hear it? Hold yeah. on. Yeah. All right, this is area code 469. You're on the air. Who Who are you? Hello? Hello? Who are you? Who, who? Hello? Hello. You're are you're on the you're on the air with us. Hi. Yeah. Ghost Magnet. Oh, Ghost oh. Magnet. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Welcome to the show. Good to hear I'm from you. I'm good. Oh, very yeah, cool. Yeah, I want that t-shirt. I raised my hand three times, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, you now you got to tell us what do you love about the show? <laughs> oh boy. Oh my god. It, it's just it's just awesome. It's just the best show ever. I oh. hate it when I get in late, but oh. but I'm I'm at least I get there. But no, um you put one of two of my stories actually on the podcast, so I don't know if that counts. Sure. But, it does. Um, yeah. but I I appreciate it. Oh. So um one of them was the um the oh, what is it? The one from Martha's Vineyard when JFK Jr. Oh, um, yeah. crashed his plane. Yes, yes, I remember yeah. that. One. That yeah. that was me. Oh, was, very cool. So yeah, yeah, it was really a wild, that wild been, thing that, that happened. Been, yeah, that was but, a wild um, story. Wow. Yeah, and then the other one was when I um the the first thing when I started listening to your podcast um. I didn't have any kind of community at all because nobody really gets me right. because oh. I see things and hear things. And, you know, I've got, you know, basically all the Claire's sure. and, um, and had them all my life, but, you know, I just didn't try, I tried not to pay attention to it. So, but when I found you guys, um, it's just like, oh my God, there's people out there. <laughs> you know? So I appreciate that so much. Aww. And um, and uh, so when I wrote in, I, I was telling you the first time about um, um, the ghost that I live with. You know, I live. Mm-hmm. It's, I've had at least four separate entities that are intelligent mm-hmm. that I have on EVP, and they're just clear as day. Okay. Um, I mean. Just the other night, my dog was freaking out looking down the hall um, when we came home from Oklahoma, and um, she was just freaking out. And um, so I got my camera out, and um, my my husband bought me the new iPhone so I could get um, better pictures <laughs> of my ghost. Yeah. And um, I thought that was pretty cool because that's that kind of means that he's kind of coming around. So that's really cool. Oh, that's wonderful. But um, I got some orbs, and when I was filming it, I saw the orbs in my camera, and they um, and one was coming down the hall, and it stopped, and then it flew flew away, and then I said, "Oh my gosh, look at that!" And on the on the playback, the EVP, um, one of the one of my entities has like a Scottish or an Irish accent, uh-huh. and um, he goes, "Oh my gosh." <laughs> it was hilarious, and it, that's oh, the way they are. I mean, they're just—they sure. really, re- you know, they respect us. Um, mm-hmm. But what happened was, um, Brent, when you were saying, I don't know what episode it was. It was one of the early ones because I kind of marathoned them, and um, you said that that you could um, help give them, you know, ground rules. Right. And I go, oh my gosh. Yeah. Because that's that's what I did, you know. Oh. And I said, I told them, I said, um, they can they can haunt me all the all they want to. They can they can, you know, hide things. They can pull my covers off, put my covers on, you know, whatever they want to do, right. as long as they don't scare me. Right. And um, and so the fact that you you kind of validated that action that I had already taken was like really cool. It just I just really appreciate what you're doing for this community. It's just 
Well, it's just awesome, and I appreciate you so much. Well, and you too, Don. So. Well, <laughs> the big toe. I love that. The big toe, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being, a, being a part of our world. I, I really appreciate it, and thank you when you did send in those stories. I really appreciate it. If you got any more, send them in. Absolutely. I'm actually uh, putting them back. Oh, I got tons. <laughs> well, please, by all means, email them. I, I'll include them on the next one. I'm putting together another episode of, of listener emails, so uh, now's the time if you want. Um, but uh, just thank you so much for being a part of this. And uh, if you would email me anyway, give me your, uh, your well, your shirt size and, and then an address to send <laughs> it to, and we'll get you a shirt out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And, and really, congratulations on the 10,000. That's a huge milestone. That's yeah. great. Oh, uh, thank you so much. And, and you've been a big part of that as of all of you out there listening as well. Thank you all because you made that happen for me. Well, I'm so glad. Well, thanks. Thanks again. so much. y'all. All right. Have a great all night right. and thanks for calling in. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Right. Cool. Well, there it goes. There's that one. There it is folks. And I guess that's about that's, the time that's that we have. It, yeah. That's the amount of time yeah. we got for tonight's show. Thank you all for being here with us. Um, as always, you know, I, I just, I, I know that every show says thank you. And, and, and I know that it can sound like, oh yeah, thank you, whatever. It can sound just kind of like a platitude, right. but it's really something sincerely from Don and myself yes. and from Sheldon and, and uh, everyone attached to the show. You guys mean everything. I mean, you make all of this happen that none of this would have happened without you guys taking part and, and for spreading the word and right. letting more people know about the show. So thank you so much. This is a, literally a dream come true for me to be able to do this show. And it's a dream for all of us to, you know, I mean, we take a lot of pride in, in putting these shows together, entertaining you as well as we can sometimes better than others, but, <laughs> but by God, we always try. And uh, you know, it's, it's means so much to turn on the lights for every show and to see you guys coming back and, uh, Thank you so much for what you've given me. You guys are always thanking me and, and Don for the shows, but you guys give us so much every time you come in and, and uh, participate and are part of the episode. So thank you for that, and uh, thank you for continuing to spread the word and to letting other people know about the shows. That really means the world. There you go. So, Don, anything in closing? No, nope, just a big giant thank you, as always, and especially tonight. Uh, um, let's see, we had Elaine and Ghost Magnet call in. They'll be getting their shirts. Remember, email us, paranormalportalradio at gmail.com. Let us know your shirt size and where we're going to send that to. Um, and then, of course, when you get it, you got to send us a picture so we can post it. Oh, and then Red Harvest says, your show is comfy. <laughs> yeah you know a lot of people cool. say that yeah they say uh you know brent your voice is so soothing and i fall asleep during the show what i know how good is that well, that's not what i'm going that's not what i'm going for <laughs> no, for the record no, that's not i don't want you guys it. to fall asleep <laughs> <laughs> but uh love you guys all and uh thank you joe joe Bloor, but gave us a bunch of hearts thank you so much uh thank you all for being here uh remember we love you all be good be kind be nice take care of each other help each other out Find the magic in every day and remember to laugh as much as you can. And we'll see you on Friday night. You going to be here, Don? I plan to be, yeah. Okay. Plan to be. Friday night, yep. Don and I will get at it again. So we'll do our best to entertain you there then, you too. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>